You're, you're gonna be like, what? Look at that. That is the body of something. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from beautiful, beautiful Moab, Utah. It's super windy out here, so I put this buff on. Hopefully the sound will be okay, but we'll see about that. I'm in a beautiful, beautiful campsite here. I mean, I'm just surrounded by mountains and big boulders, and there's like snow-capped mountains over there. It's pretty awesome. Like I mentioned, this is my last few days with the storyteller, so it's kind of bittersweet. So we're gonna talk about, you know, what's gonna happen in the future. But first, I think I wanna climb that mountain there. Not that mountain with the snow on it, but that mountain there. I don't know if you can see how steep that is, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a go. a little bit harder than it looks and a little bit higher. That one over there would be a beast. Ah. All right, here's the rock we were looking at. I guess I gotta summit it, right? Ah. All right, summited. So beautiful, ah. so windy. Let's see if I can hunker away from the wind. Whew. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Make sure there's no rattlesnakes in here. Like I mentioned, we're in Moab. We're just outside of Arches National Park in a BLM area. Awesome free parking, 14 days. I'll put a Campendium link down below. But we're also close to the dinosaur footprints. So we're gonna go check out Arches and we're gonna go check out dinosaur footprints. So let's go. So we are at Mill Canyon Dinosaur Tracks. I'm really excited about this kind of stuff. I really geek out over, over this. I've always been fascinated with fossils. I have a couple, you know, old shark teeth and, and things like that, but I definitely geek out on this type of stuff. So, ooh, we might have our first dinosaur sighting. What do you think? Is that a, you think that's real life dinosaur poop? Just kidding. There's a movie. I can't remember the name of it. It's with Ringo Starr. It's like an old movie. Ringo Starr plays like a caveman and there's dinosaurs at that time. It's a slapstick silly movie and there's like a lot of huge dinosaur poop. <laughs> and that's what that reminded me of. All right, let's see. Okay, so this first set of tracks are crocodile tracks. Not really what we're here to see. So check these out real quick and then we'll head over to the dinosaur tracks. Okay, what you really want to see, the dinosaur tracks. big guy.
All right, that was so cool. You know, it's not something you're gonna spend a lot of time on, but it's something you should just stop and check out. It's just amazing that all those dinosaurs were in the same location. It's just weird, you know, because I don't think of it as like, you know, the scenes you see in Africa on the Serengeti with a bunch of herding animals. You know, I think of, I guess dinosaurs is more solitary, I guess, because, you know, we think of T-Rex and things like that. Just crazy that they were all in there and there that moment in time has been preserved for millions and millions and millions of years it's just it's insane so cool definitely worth a stop but let's go check out arches so like a dummy i forgot my national park pass at home i didn't bring it with me i didn't put it in the storyteller it's 30 dollars to get in with a vehicle but i kind of lucked out the, there was such a backup in the line that they said come on through we're letting everyone in for free for safety reasons i guess you know covid or something there was just you know too much of a backlog i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what they said so this is awesome but yeah just know that that it's 30 dollars a vehicle to get in here or 15 dollars if you're walking or on a bike a little pit stop to hike up to some arches check them out real quick and then jump back in the van see some more about uh, arches national park and then we need to go head towards colorado and scout out a campground yes i'm hiking in flip-flops this is not too bad of a hike i mean there's stairs <laughs> so can't complain too much for those that know me, you know that I'm not a huge fan of national parks. I like going and visiting them a little bit. You know, obviously seeing the beautiful things are national parks for a reason. But I always tell people, make sure you hit up the national forest and BLM land around there. Because sometimes you'll find things that are just as cool, but there's nobody there. You have them all to yourself. Like these arches are, they're gorgeous. But you can find them out there uh, on BLM land and and national forest. So it's starting to get a little bit late and I need to head towards Colorado and find a campsite. So I think we're gonna call it a day in Arches National Park. It's been beautiful just driving around. All right, let's go find a camp spot in Colorado. Okay, so I put in my GPS to get out of the park and it's taking me down this gravel road instead of going back the other way. It says like rough road here. I'll show you here real quick. So I'm not so sure about this. Like, is this really gonna take me out of this park onto a, onto Highway 70? <laughs> That's what it says on GPS. It says, you'll go this way, go down this old dirt road. Uh, the road closed gate is open. So I'm assuming you can do this. This is so odd, <laughs> but I mean, it's open. So I'm assuming I can do it. So hopefully I get out of this thing. If you're enjoying this video please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from also make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos okay so i feel a little better now someone in a subaru with colorado license plates just passed me so i'm assuming they're going this way to go to highway 70 as well head back to colorado so i don't feel <laughs> i don't feel so worried about this being a complete waste of time. We've got like seven miles left on this washboard road. So hopefully uh, hopefully we'll get on I-70 and uh, start heading towards Grand Junction, Colorado and finding some uh, BLM land or National Forest land to camp on out there for tonight. Okay, so we finally made it on to I-70. <laughs> that was a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. That road turned into BLM land and a BLM road. And I think it's probably 30, 35 miles of dirt road to get to I-70, which is fine. And now I'm just headed into Colorado. I looked at my map real quick to see some possible camping sites. And I have an old pin on there of a spot that I absolutely In half a mile, adore. take exit 171 toward Minturn, Leadville. That kind of gave you a little hint of where that is. <laughs> so that's where I'm headed now. I'm headed to this amazing site. It's probably gonna snow tonight at that site. So, ah, Take exit 171, then keep right at the fork. It'll be a good test of this storyteller's cold weather camping again. So 
I'm excited about it. So let's go do it. Let's go find this campground or this campsite, not campground. It's free in a national forest. All right, so <laughs> surprise is over. We're here in Leadville, Colorado, which is the highest incorporated city in the country. The town is at 10,200 feet. And I wanna show you around Leadville just a little bit. Actually, what I really wanna show you are my favorite places to eat here in Leadville. So let me go show you those and then we'll go hit the campsite. All right, so this place is worth a visit if you want hamburgers. It's called Wild Bill's. They're gourmet hamburgers. Really, really, really good. So I highly recommend you stop here if you're you know, craving a hamburger. All right, on to my favorite pizza place here in Leadville. The guy was outside filming the uh, storyteller and I'm like, hey, can I film your place too? Okay, so now we're at my favorite pizza spot. It's called High Mountain Pies. They make amazing pizza here. You know, the key to good pizza is good water. That's why New York has such great pizza. And this place has equally amazing water. So the pizzas are just insanely good. So I highly recommend stopping here. It's closed right now, but when it's open, there's usually a huge line here. So make sure uh, you get here, you know, at, uh, not at the high time, like 11 to one, it's almost impossible. You have to wait forever. So come a little early or a little bit later and you'll be good to go. All right, so another spot that you have to stop is this saloon right here, supposedly it's the oldest still active saloon in the United States. You know, it's just, I mean, it's a bar. They've got some great um, craft beers inside, but it's something you just have to do. You're at this town at 10,000 feet. This place was opened in like 18 something. So make sure you stop by, have a beer. Uh, it's worth that experience alone. They got some decent food in there as well. All right, so my last food stop recommendation is one I got from Amber from Story Chasing. She was the first person to take me here. So I really appreciate this. Thanks, Amber, for this recommendation and taking me here, taking me to Leadville, actually, for the first time. Uh, it's called Casa Sanchez. It's Mexican food. It's like, it's, it's pretty much Tex-Mex. I mean, it is really, really good. So I highly recommend stopping by here, having a meal, the good thing is we're about to head to our campsite, our free campsite, which you can get to all these places in like five minutes. So you're really close to the town when you're out in this national forest camping, which is really cool. But let's head that way, let's find the campsite. All right, so this is one of the spots you can camp and it looks so much different than when I was here earlier this year. Oh my God, it just, it doesn't even look like the same place. If you remember back, I did a tour, my most popular video of Kaz's Airstream Base Camp. That was filmed right here. And back there was where I camped. So it's kind of like this big wide open space that you can camp in. But I also filmed a tour of a woman named Jenny's van, her, uh, her white van. Uh, that she built out herself, which was really cool. I'll link that somewhere up here. I'll link Kaz's video as well. Um, and she was camped further down this road along a river. So I'm gonna see if any of those spots are open. I'm hoping because it's cold that I'll be able to get one of these really cool spots that Jenny had along the river. So let's go check that out. So go ahead, tell me all the ways you miss it. Okay, I've encountered a couple things that are kind of crazy. So the first being that the road that you go down to get to those really cool spots is covered in snow. So I'm assuming when they plowed this road out over here, which doesn't lead down to there, I'm assuming they 
they just put it here. So it's kind of blocking the road. Whoa, it goes down there. So I'm debating with myself whether, I don't think, I mean, I think that's a little bit too much for my van to handle. I mean, this is a, this is a huge snowbank here. I mean, it's huge. I'm gonna try to go that way and see if I can get down, but I, if I remember correctly, I can't get down that way. Um, but, oh my God, dude, look at that. That, I'm pretty sure that's a bear paw. Holy cow, yeah, these are big paw prints. And then, okay, <laughs> holy cow, I gotta be careful. I gotta keep my head on a, on a swivel because this is bear country. I mean, there's actually signs everywhere that says, this is bear country. So, oh man, I wanna show you something down here. I'm gonna hike down here real quick. Oh, Jesus, man. I just gotta be really careful. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Cause it's so, whoa, <laughs> whoa. It's so slick from the snow. And also there, when you see what I'm about to show you, you're gonna be like, what? Dude, what are you doing? Although, what I'm about to show you, I don't think anything would come back for. Because it's picked pretty clean. <laughs> that gives you an indication. All right, let me look around here real quick. <laughs> oh, look, my van's up there. Oh my God. You're gonna be like, what? Look at that. That is the body of something that was picked clean. That is insane. Maybe by wolves, maybe by bear, but that's insane. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I had to abandon that route because that snow pack was just too high. Um, but I know a back way there um, I think I learned this from Kaz, so I'm gonna go try that back way. I'm not gonna, go, I probably won't go too deep in because, uh, you know, the fact that it's, that it's gonna snow tonight, um, I don't wanna get stuck in there for a few days. So, but I wanted to show you this sign. So th when you find this sign here, you can turn left and go like a back way. But bear country and <laughs> keep your, keep your campsite clean, um, free. So we're going to head down this way here. I already know better. 24K got nothing on me. Make you want it forever. Trying to play a game, but you don't play for keeps. Messing with a girl from the east side, yeah. yeah. And I love you, want to build your dreams on, yeah. yeah. But I already know better. I'm a go-getter and I got me on my own. And I don't waste any time chasing the ghost who don't Okay, <laughs> it's been a while, but I got myself stuck. You know, you kind of take for granted being in a van like this. I did not put it in four by four, which was really, really stupid of me. And I tried to just plow through this, what turned out to be pretty deep snow, probably uh, five inches, uh, maybe six inches. But I, w I dropped it into four by four, put some, Put some logs in there and I was able to get myself out. So you can see, just really stupid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come along the dirt and park there. We're gonna get some snow tonight. So I'm gonna make sure I can get myself out. Uh, you don't wanna get yourself stuck out here. I mean, I've got plenty of food. You know, I could ride it out for a little bit and then eventually get myself out of here. But, and I'm not that far actually. I could, I could hike out of here probably probably a mile so uh, but yeah you can't take mother nature for granted you, no matter how good your tool is she can kick your ass if she wants to and just that little bit right there got me stuck now had i been in four by four i don't think i would have had that issue van life is always an adventure you know i should have probably done a little bit more research before i came out here but this is my favorite spot i'm gonna go in there and get the rig ready just relax the rest of the night and I'll let you know tomorrow morning uh, what kind of what kind of weather we got last night. All right, so good morning. We definitely got a light little dusting out here. 
Um, let's see. Let's turn on some KC lights. All right, so I got myself at least onto the dirt road. The KC lights are awesome. Super, super bright. So I'm at the main little road, so I'm gonna stop here, park. A second I'm just gonna let the van heat up for a little bit I wanted to see if I could get out of there real quick because <laughs> that was my biggest worry was getting stuck from the snow into the little area that I had gotten stuck in before but I'm in four by four unlike when I've got stuck when I was in two-wheel drive so I just went right out of there pretty easy all right the van's all ready to go I kind of want to show you outside and what I'm working with it's really cold. It's like 27 degrees. So we'll step out here for a second. All right. Hey, Bear. <laughs> so back over there was where I was camped behind me. And now I've got all the KC lights on. So it's pretty well lit up. That is the road I'm going to. It's actually very dark and kind of, it's like through the woods. You can kind of see the, the moon. Beautiful out here. It's really beautiful. <laughs> it's cold though. I don't think there'll be any animals lurking around tonight. But yeah, so we're, we're gonna jump onto, we're gonna take these old dirt roads get back on I-70, head up to I-70, and then start heading east towards um, Alabama to drop off this rig. So that's what we're about to do. Let's go do it. All right, we're back on asphalt road. So I'm going to take this thing out of four x four, turn all the KC lights on and head towards I-70, headed east towards Alabama. Okay, so we're in Birmingham, Alabama, about five minutes from dropping off the Storyteller. It's kind of a rainy, cloudy day out here. I guess that's kind of fitting since in the last 45 days, this is the second time that I'm dropping off a van and I'll be without a van, not living van life, which is kind of crazy. So let me, uh, let me concentrate on driving here in the city, get this van dropped off and We'll talk about what's next. So that's it. Life in the Storyteller ends. I'm back down to just this backpack. So I guess we should talk about what's next. You know what? It's raining out here. Let me just show you. Aloha from beautiful, amazing Hawaii. <laughs> My home away from home. Um, we're gonna be exploring everything the island has to offer over the next two months. And then, to be honest with you, I don't have a clue. I have no idea. Maybe we'll get another van and continue our van life adventures. Maybe we'll hop on a plane to some exotic location and explore another country. I really don't have a clue. But what I do know is I really appreciate all of you joining me on this journey Thank you for watching. See you next week.